we're checking out the Tajima Grace 700 guitar. About two weeks ago, I reviewed a really interesting Schechter that was a Tele style guitar with some Filtertron pickups. And a lot of you guys really liked a lot of things I said about that, which is it had some features like an arm carve and the belly carve. And it was kind of like a modern take with a kind of a traditional look. Well, interesting enough, the only thing you guys said about that guitar was it would be really cool if that had humbuckers, just full size. Well, this guitar is essentially a type, of type of version of guitar like that, but it does have full-size humbuckers. Now, this guitar was designed by an amazing artist named Cacao Santos, and he came up with some really cool ideas for this guitar, and I, I want to share them with you, but also there's a couple things about the guitars that's very frustrating, and I want to share those things with you. The first thing that was cool, I thought, about the guitar was it came with this really cool hang tag that opened up like a trifold, and it had uh, all the specifications of the guitar in four different languages. And I thought that was really cool, except for the specifications are extremely vague and some of the things you really wanna know aren't anywhere to be found, not even on their website. It says, the top is quilted maple. Now this is a beautiful quilted maple top and uh, it doesn't say solid top and that's because it's not. This is a veneer. I was able to detect that by looking at the sides of the pickups. You can see where the, uh, the cavities are routed. You can see the mahogany goes all the way to the top and then there's just a thin layer of veneer on here. So this is a quilted veneer but it just says quilted top, but not solid or veneer, it is veneer. The body is mahogany, and that is also evident to see. It's a beautiful piece, or I should say three pieces of mahogany. It's three pieces glued together. Uh, the neck is maple. Fingerboard is technical wood. Now, if you don't know what technical wood is, it's basically uh, wood fibers that they use heat and steam to pressurize it to make a new piece of wood. Now it's going to look like ebony, kind of feel like ebony. Some of you guys might be thinking of uh, companies like Rich Light. Same kind of concept here and the idea that it's a uh, man infused or man made type material with a little bit of natural things going on, a little bit of man made. It's a very vague explanation, but all you have to know is it's very stable and uh, it looks like wood. Like I said, if you saw this, you would think it was ebony. It's got grain in it, feels pretty good, uh, looks really good, but of course it's, it's obviously technical wood that uh, was not on this information or on their website as well. So like I said, I want to go into that. It has 22 frets. The nut is 43 millimeters, but it doesn't say what the nut material is. I am pretty sure the nut material is bone or some kind of synthetic bone material. It is not plastic, uh, which is uh, what I was able to determine. So that is also very cool, but again, not noted on any of the information. The pickups are Tajima Zebra Alnico humbuckers. It doesn't say if it's Alnico 5 or 2. However, we can test them. So let's go ahead and test them and see what we think we're going to expect here. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Turn this on. And what we have here is the bridge is putting out 8.44. So it's going to be a lower output pickup. You're going to think like a 59 PAF style pickup. We go to that neck pickup it's looking like 7.41. Again, very PAF style. Both these pickups are gonna have a very PAF uh, output vibe to them, which I'm pretty sure. And of course I played it earlier and I have to admit that's what I was getting from that too. It says volume, tone, and three-way switch. That's correct. There's no coil splitting feature, which I think is a little bit of a shame. Uh, I'm not a huge coil split fan, but it would be nice if you could have that feature in this guitar. The bridge is the Tajima Tremolo with two pivots. It's essentially their version or a generic version of a Goto. The only thing worth noting is the block is a cast metal block. It's not a brass or machine block. The machine heads are vintage nickel. Now it's funny, again, very vague information, but if you're going off the specs, but these are uh, obviously locking keys. They just say Tajima on them and they're actually really good. I'm actually impressed. Overall, very impressed with a lot of the features. Not sure why they're not choosing to, sh to highlight those features since a lot of the features are cool. It's usually the other way. Usually they're trying to hide. They're not getting cool features on here. And then it says colors, check our website and catalog. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So things that we definitely want to know is what is the radius of this fretboard? What are the frets? They're nickel frets. They are medium jumbo. I was able to check them. I've also checked the radius of the fretboard. It's a nine and a half inch fretboard. The neck carve is extremely familiar because it's basically the Fender Professional neck carve. It feels almost identical. Uh, it's uh, not too thick. It's not a thin neck. It's somewhere in the middle. It's got a light C or a deep C on it. 
It feels really good. I, I like it all up on the 12 fret area and I also like it in the first five fret area. Really, really cool. Like I said, if you're familiar with Fender, this is gonna be feel very familiar, uh, very familiar. However, where it will differ is this is a high gloss back. So where the fenders are now all satin, this is high gloss. I actually like it. Um, obviously they're probably using some kind of polyurethane. So the hard candy coated finish feels really good with this neck. I like it, but of course, if you're not into gloss necks, you may want to pass on this. But if you're into gloss necks, they did a great job. Now here's another place where I think the guitar really shines. It's in the fret work. The frets are really nicely polished. They're not really highly polished on the ends, but you can see, you can see a little bit of the glistening on the ends and you can see that they're really smooth with little to no fret sprout. I'm sure that's because the wood is that technical wood and it doesn't shrink very much. This guitar is obviously to hit a price point. So even though they loaded with the locking keys, the nut, the, the cool features, it still seems like the goal is to hit a price point. Looking at this guitar in the market, there's a couple things to note. First, this guitar sells for $499 and it's manufactured in China. When I was looking around at competitors, I would say definitely the Squire Contemporary Telecaster is competitor at $399. So this one's about $100 less, but the Tajima gives you a couple cooler features like locking keys, the arm carve, and that cool fretboard. However, if you're looking to save money, the Harley Benton Fusion is sitting at $405. So it's $95 less and it has a lot of the features like locking keys and it has a roasted neck. However, I have to say, since I've played both these guitars, I thought the fit and finish was better on the Tajima. The frets were a little more polished, it felt a little better, and there was less little mistakes in the finish of the guitar. And the Harley Benton doesn't have a tremolo, so you have to factor that in if you want that. Some other guitars that I think are in this kind of realm are, of course, the Fender Player Telecaster. It's got two humbuckers. It doesn't have locking keys. It doesn't have the arm carve or a tremolo but I think the pickups are comparable. I, of course, I like this guitar, but it is $230 more, something you have to consider. Then you would also have the Fender Special Edition Custom, which has a flame top, has real Seymour Duncans, and a set neck, which I like, and it's I believe it's made in Indonesia, but again, it would also be $225 more. And then rounding out this little competition, I would definitely check out the Schecter PT Pro. Now it, of course, again, has upgraded pickups, a roasted neck, and it has locking keys, however, it it's at $900, so the most expensive of these in the market. They did a neck carve on the back, and this is, again, interesting stuff that manufacturers keep doing. This carve, however, falls a little short. Although they did the cool carve here, and they dropped it about two to three millimeters uh, thinner around the neck pocket, which is cool. They still left the big plate and the carve isn't rounded off. So when you do what I call the handshake and hold it, it's gonna feel exactly like a Fender Telecaster. It doesn't feel any different uh, or, uh, or better or superior anyway. It's still poking my hand right there, right in the middle of my palm. And again, if you're not, not worried about that, it's not a concern for you, but if you're trying to find something with a little better neck access, uh, this isn't going to do that for you. However, what it will do for you is give you a beautiful arm carve, which is another thing you guys liked in the last guitar I talked about, and a belly carve. For those of us that definitely need that, uh, that's always cool too. And the other thing that's really nice is the weight on this. This is seven pounds, five ounces. So very light, mostly because like I said, there's not a real maple cap. This is all mahogany. And, uh, and then of course the maple and then the the technical wood. So not a lot of weight to this guitar. Feels great. Definitely balanced really well. This, now the pickups, again, we don't know what they are, but they do sound good. And especially where I was most impressed was the bridge. I'm plugged into my 65 Fender Deluxe. And you can see. The bridge is not harsh, it's not overly bright, it's not overly compressed, it feels really good, and it's not something that you would normally use on a clean channel, but I like playing a bridge on a clean channel when I can. If the guitar allows me, if it sounds good, it's really nice. <laughs> And again, right now you'd be probably hearing that kind of mid-range nasal, harsh, picky sound. And that's why I like it because of course it's a Telecaster shape, but it doesn't have the Telecaster sound. And uh, that's, I think what you're going for. If you're going for this, you're going for the vibe, but not that, that sound. Now, one of the things I think it's missing is it doesn't have the coil split, but here's what I kind of discovered. The middle position, does have a great tone and it's not coil splitting them, but it does have that great tone. Let's go to it. I'm going to do comparative. Here's the uh, bridge again. 
Here's that middle. It really softens up really, really well. And I think that's because we'll go to the neck pickup and I'll go back to the middle in a second, but the neck pickup is really warm. So a lot of output. Output meaning not push on the amp, just a lot of fullness to it, I should say, real full. Right, now that bridge. And that's great, you get the quacky middle position. And then back to that big, full neck pickup sound. Okay, let's see how they sound with some overdrive. All right, let's go to that neck pickup. Now the neck pickup, again, warms up a lot and takes all the, the pick chirp off the... Off the and, and when I was listening to Cacao and I was listening to some of his music, because uh, I wasn't familiar with him until I saw the guitar, um, really amazing player, by the way, but he's definitely got that smooth Eric Johnson-y uh, tone. And I think that's why this neck pickup is voiced this way. I go to the middle position, not something I usually play when I'm playing overdrive. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, because it brought it brought the uh, pick attack back into that warm. Wow. That sounds good too. It's it's an impressive guitar. I would say in its price point, look, we know what this is gonna compete with. Obviously, it's going to be a lesser price point than the Fenders, than the other name brands out there making product like this. But how does it compare to products like Harley Benton in this price point? I think it's a little bit more unique than Harley Benton in, the, in that, in that uh, regard. When I mean unique, I mean it just offers some features that are really cool that I think that I don't see the Harley Benton ones offer. However, Harley Benton has stuff like this. So again, if you're st sticking to the strict budget concept, I think the Harley Benton budget mark guitars will probably kind of beat this out on that, that, on that vein. But I think the Tajima's got a cool vibe. And I know that sometimes it's silly, but I think they have a vibe of making really good guitars like Harley Benton, but just there's something about, I think that appeals, the fact that they can, that they actually make a higher end line guitars too and as well. So something else to consider. But again, uh, I'm always curious to see what you guys think on that. As always, I wanna thank you guys so much today for hanging out with me. And as always, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.